Murphy. I want to bring in Olivia Enos, policy analyst for the Heritage Foundation's Asian Studies Center. Uh, Olivia, I'm just looking back at my notes just to remind everybody that all this was set off by proposed extradition legislation that if passed would have allowed some suspects to be sent to China from Hong Kong, where critics say they could face possible torture and unfair trials. That's what this battle is about. You heard Melissa talking about it's one country, two systems. That's what Hong Kong understood. They, they think that's in question now. Yeah. The proposed extradition law really just sparked an energy among Hong Kongers that really didn't seem to be there before. And I think that this is pointing to this broader desire by Hong Kongers to see freedom flourish there over the long term. And I think that they're questioning whether or not they're going to have to potentially surrender their freedoms to Beijing, either ahead of the 2047 handover when Hong Kong's supposed to be returned back to Beijing. But I think people are worried that with this extradition law and other there are signs that maybe Beijing is looking to interfere a lot sooner than we originally thought. Interesting. We had a previous guest on uh, America's Newsroom who was talking about potentially, and maybe he's been other places too, potentially there being, uh, and per reporting as well, some Chinese, um, I don't know if they're military or police or whomever they are on the ground. Are you hearing anything like that? Because that would certainly change the scope of things too or no? There have been reports over the last several days, over the last week, that um, there are actually Chinese officials on the border who have even been t doing test drills that look like it would be an effort to counter protesters. Whether this is a warning shot or a foretelling of what is to come, I think that remains to be seen. But it is clear that nobody wants to have a Tiananmen Square repeat on our hands, particularly not in an area where you have so many people who have enjoyed freedom for so many years. And where you have businessmen, both international businessmen and women, and also Hong Kongers themselves, who are, you know, regularly enjoying freedom of business there that may not mm -hmm. be there if this uh, crackdown takes place. Real quickly, Olivia, I'm going to hand this off to my colleague, Melissa Francis. She has a question. But before then, you talk about uh, the safety of people on the ground. The president said just moments ago as he was about to board uh, flight uh, Marine One to head to an event in Pennsylvania today, he said, Hong Kong, things are a very tough situation. I hope it works out for everybody, liberty, including China. Hope nobody gets hurt. Hope nobody gets killed. How does the uh, presence of Chinese officials or others on the ground complicate matters with regard to keeping people safe? It's definitely complicated, and I think it begs the question of what the U.S. should do. And I think that the U.S. needs to continue to support those protesters who are acting in a peaceful manner, who are advocating for freedom in Hong Kong, but also be unequivocal in our condemnation of violence, both from protesters, but probably principally and most importantly, any violence that might emanate from Beijing. Olivia, this is Melissa Francis. Um, I know that within the Chinese media, there has been criticism of the U.S. for, in part, sparking this. How do they, how do they sort of make that argument? China loves to blame the U.S. for any sort of unrest that takes place. It's part of great power politics, blaming the other side. Um, but I think that overall, we need to recognize this as a movement that has been led by Hong Kongers, for Hong Kongers, and for freedom. And that's where it rests. Um, and, you know, this is a leaderless protest movement insofar as it's literally been sparked through social media and otherwise. But the people who are involved and who are moving in a peaceful manner, those are the ones who are looking to see potential future reform in Hong Kong, one that would restore the ear of the Hong Kong authorities, giving them a desire to actually listen and hear what Hong Kongers want for their future. Olivia Enos, policy analyst, Asian Studies Center, uh, Davis Institute for National Security and Foreign Policy Heritage Foundation. Thank you very much for your time and expertise today. Good to see you. Thank you for having me.